Well, this was probably the most bullish Jerome Powell I have ever seen. And ordinarily, I would listen to this bullishness and say, LFG, let's go. But I have a weird feeling Jerome Powell was applying for his job here. Now, I know that might sound ridiculous. What do you mean, Kevin? He already has his job. Yes, but he was asked three times during the press conference, what would he do or how would he feel or would he basically quit if he's asked to step down or how is he going to feel if he gets fired by Donald Trump? And it was so expected that he was going to get asked about it that we actually wrote it down on our bingo card. In fact, take a look at this. On our bingo card, which we got bingo, on our bingo card, we literally wrote down, are you going to quit? And then I wrote bonus. He says no. And he literally just said no and then went quiet to the point where the reporter's like, do you, do you have any other comments on that? No. Some of the president's elect's advisors have suggested that you should resign. Um, if he asked you to leave, would you go? No. I knew the question would come. Uh, can you follow up on it? And I knew do you think no. that legally he did, you're not required to leave? No. <laughs> it was stone cold and great. But it showed you that, like, the idea of him getting fired was under his skin. So he's kind of like, okay, yeah, like, I, I know people are talking about this. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to be prepared to talk about it. That's, I think, what we got here. But at the same time, you also got a Powell who wanted to be in a position of, oh, uh, the economy's actually great. The economy's strong. This inflation is happening. And you know what? The weakness uh, that you're seeing in the labor market, don't worry about that at all. That's just normalizing. It's just going back to its post-COVID normal. This was an interesting point of view from Powell, and it is one that makes sense. He recognizes that bond yields have gone up and suggests, hey, you know what? Bond yields went up when Bill Ackman shot them to 5% as well, and then three weeks later, they plummeted. So who cares? Like, they go up and down. Big deal. But we're not going to really take a few weeks of bond market movements and include that in our pricing. Our point of view is that there's no sign of inflation coming back. Inflation is going down. There's also nothing that we're worried about in the economy right now. Honestly, that was all pretty bullish. Like I said, it sounds like he's applying for his job because if a president wants a bull, you got Jay Powell as your bull. He's like, hey, things are good. Uh, Nick T did not sit next to the New York Times girl, but he picks up on, you know, hey, but you know, your cutting rates and the, the, the financial markets are, are tightening. He's like, fluctuations, economy strong. You know, maybe we'd be more concerned but then we got really good positive revisions. He referred to the NIPA revisions again. Uh, the NIPA revisions are basically these uh, consumer service uh, or consumer spending and income uh, numbers. And those revisions came out after the whole Jackson Hole panic, and they were pretty good. They suggested, hey, the consumer's saving more money than we had been thinking. Uh, they were. We thought the savings rate had fallen under 3%, which is really bad and would be recessionary. And then all of a sudden, they revised them up to like 4.7% or something. Also very bullish. Uh, so, uh, you know, he also discusses this idea of, hey, you know, we're in such a place where GDP grew in the third quarter at 2.8%. It grew at the same pace in the second quarter. And there are some murmurings that the economy in 2025 could actually be stronger, not weaker, which is really interesting because at the same time as Powell is uh, talking as bullishly as he is, the treasury market saw a plummet in treasury yields. You saw the 10-year come down 11.2 basis points. Here it is, 11.2 basis points down on the 10-year treasury yield at the same time as Powell's talking about how strong the economy is. Why? Well, probably because the 10-year treasury has been really concerned about inflation and sort of an, a new wave of inflation. And it seems like that concern over inflation has really gone away. Uh, eh, eh, at least in the minds of Powell and the board, uh, even though initially they suggested, oh, you know, we got rid of the phraseology that we're gaining greater confidence. He's basically saying, yeah, we got rid of that word because we're not gaining greater confidence. We are confident that we are on a sustainable path to 2%. 
and the labor market where it sits right now is fine. So if things go bad in one direction or the other, we can react to it. Uh, but he brought it up also like expected. He's asked about, hey, you know, payroll job gains slowed to 104,000 on average per month over the last three months. I'd been using 103,000, he rounded to 104,000, fine Powell. That's half the pace of what we had the first six months of the year. And his response uh, to that is, eh, but you know, strikes and hurricanes affected this. <sighs> okay, I mean, that is the easy blow off that most people were going with. So I think here you had this unanimous 25 basis point cut because board members were basically saying, hey, let's like, things are good right now. Let's just get to next month and let's see how next month goes. Because right now there's really nothing to say that things are falling apart. The data isn't unexplainably bad. Uh, data overall uh, in, a, in a stock market at all time highs suggests things are okay. We also, and this is something I've been talking about for many, many months, is this idea about, hey, well, well, what about inflation? Like some of these inflation reports come in a little hotter than expected. And usually what I talk about in these inflation reports is, yes, but inside these inflation reports, when you actually decompose them, you find that most of the inflation is being driven by uh, insurance, which is a lagging form of inflation, or the housing market, uh, specifically owner's equivalent rents, which is also a lagging source of inflation. And the problem with that is when you're using lagging data uh, to suggest, oh no, inflation side, inflation side. No, not necessarily. Uh, it's definitely a possibility that inflation is coming down. But what happens is you have, as Powell called it, catch up inflation, and this will skew some of the numbers. So catch up inflation is basically saying, hey, uh, all of a sudden we're in a place where, uh, you know, we think that inflation looks like it's going up on a month over month basis, but really, oh, that's just insurance inflation or rental inflation from a year ago or two years ago. This is something that he made pretty clear as well. He talked about a stronger September jobs report offset by a weaker October one, but then he balanced that and said, look, spending data is up and retail sales and inventories numbers are up and we have better savings revisions. So like on balance, it seems like the data is roughly stronger. So we're just gonna recalibrate and we won't make any predictions in terms of what we're going to do with rates going forward. But even though the labor market's stabilized and continues to gradually cool, uh, we're going to respond and hopefully keep it there by cutting rates a bit. He doesn't comment on the election, of course, as expected. He doesn't comment on this idea that we're going to, uh, uh, you know, speculate on what Trump's policies, whether they're tax policies or uh, tariff policies might be, because sort of as you would expect the Fed to say, they're going to wait to see how would this actually affect the economy and then make decisions around that. And then, of course, wait for data uh, before reacting. So really, uh, even though Powell says they can't rule anything out, this this didn't, like, in other words, they can't rule out having an interest hike next year. They can't rule out pausing. They did say they would pause when they think they're closer to neutral. And they did say they'd cut faster if they had to, if the labor market started weakening. Really, there was nothing scary in this report. On balance, this report was really kind of like what you would want Powell to do. Show up, give us your 25 basis point cut, get us bingo on uh, meet Kevin's bingo board and then go back home. Go back home and sit around for another six weeks until your next Fed meeting. This is highly expected. So now the questions and takeaways for this. Well, Powell basically poured cold water on the idea that inflation is reigniting. He also poured cold water though on the idea that the labor market is significantly deteriorating. So now all of a sudden, if, if you are a bear, Okay, this is important. If you're a bear in the economy, you kind of have to look at this and you kind of have to say, all right, well, you know, Powell does not see any weakening. Does he not see any weakening because he doesn't want to get fired? Does he not want to say that there's any weakening because if he does, then there will be weakening? Or is there truly no weakening? <laughs> like, it's, it's somewhat hard to say. I think J Jay Powell is generally an honest person and I do think that the Federal Reserve, at least what they tell us via the Beige Book, does see signs of weakening. But Jerome Powell's calling this, quite frankly, 
normalization right now, probably because he wants his statue. He wants his Mount Rushmore statue of the Fed chairperson who actually stuck a soft landing and was the first chairperson to not cause a recession after a deeply inverted yield curve, a yield curve that's so deeply inverted that it would signal 500 basis points of cuts. And instead, he's slowly feeding us 25s in the hopes that we're going to be complacent and okay with that. As a bull, you look, you want to eat up everything Powell just said. Because as a bull, you look at this and go, bro, he said, again, everything is fine. The economy is good. And actually, it is bullish by him saying this because by him saying this, more people make bullish bets. More people, businesses maybe, uh, might buy equipment, might hire people. Oh, okay, Powell says the economy is fine. People are going to believe him and they're going to react to it. Uh, or at the very least, they're not going to react to the negative. You know, if Powell came up and said, we have really big problems on the horizon, next year is going to suck, it's not going to be better, then you're going to self-fulfill that. So uh, all we can really say out of this one is, A, we got 25 as expected. B, we really got no forward guidance on what to expect. And while there were a lot of fluctuations, Markets went into this expecting a 67% chance of a cut in December, and they went out of it expecting a 67% chance of a cut in December. So basically, Powell just survived the conversation, gave us the 25, going on vacation for the next six weeks. That's kind of what you got out of Powell here, uh, which is good. Uh, I mean, that's that's ultimately what you would want because, again, you don't want Powell to crash the economy because that would self-fulfill a recession. Uh, now, it is very interesting that Treasury yields did weaken pretty much everything that they gained after uh, Donald Trump became president and was, was elected, became president-elect. You know, Treasury yields were up somewhere around 11 basis points. Today, they're down 11 basis points. Part of this is probably Powell's confidence on the lack of inflation, which I completely agree with. And I also love his comment on, hey, you know, you remember when uh, the 10 year treasury yield was like 5% uh, when Bill Ackman was hawking it over here? He's like three weeks later, it was down 50 basis points. I actually think there's a chance that Jerome Powell just gave you a clear as day signal to buy bonds like hashtag TMF to the moon. No guarantees, like don't don't trade on that. You know, it's just an idea. But uh, it is interesting because Powell's trying to say, hey, economy's strong at the same time. And, uh, you know, bond yields could plummet, but there's no inflation. So he's sending this. It sounds to me like he's actually not trying to send a clear signal to the stock market or to the economy. He's trying to send a clear signal to the bond market. We have inflation cured. Bond yields can go down. And if he's actually able to talk bond yields down, then what he does is he actually, again, increases the odds of a soft landing. So bullish TLT, bullish TMF after that, maybe? I mean, I'm, I'm biased on that. I'm exposed to those. But I think that uh, that's interesting because, I mean, uh, those were the words he said. Watch, watch it uh, yourself to see what he says. Uh, so anyway, that's my take on the Fed. Not much of a game changer here, but if you look for nuance, the bullishness probably should be taken with a grain of salt because of the weakness in the labor market. The, you know, talking down yields going up should probably be a bit of an indicator that he'd like to see yields lower, but they ain't going to make any changes this meeting on it. So see what happens over the next six weeks. Anyway, those are my take, uh, takes on the Fed. Uh, if you want my morning report on what's going on in the market, what catalysts to watch, and maybe how to trade certain things, hashtag not personalized advice, obviously, but it gives you a free report in the morning. Every morning at about 6.15 a.m., text it to you and email it to you. Uh, send, me a, uh, send me a sign up. All you have to do is go to meetkevin.com slash alpha, drop your info in there, and, uh, and you'll be in. Just so you can kind of see what that website looks like. It's right here. Uh, you can watch the video to learn more about what's in it. If you're outside the U.S., click here. Uh, otherwise, you could click, if you're in the U.S., click the L button. And if you want a preview as to what a free one of those looks like to see if it's something for you, I'm still working on how to format it. But what you could do is you could go to ehack.com, uh, scroll down past the Fed section. And once you get past the Fed section right here for today, in case you didn't get the message, you could click on the alpha report right here. When you click on that link, you'll see today's alpha report and, and kind of what was in it from this morning. Uh, and you can see if it's worth signing up for you. So that's sort of a free way to look at it. 
Uh, and it's a free thing to sign up for anyway. So anyway, thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. Really appreciate you all. Goodbye, everyone. Good luck and enjoy the rest of your trading day or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, if you're in Ventura, California, Ventura County, California, stay away from the fires. Thanks, folks. Goodbye. And good luck. Why do you not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take.